Hey guys, Dr. Grady here, SwollenMD on TikTok or Instagram. I was here today to talk to you about hormonal acne. It's a super common problem, but very frustrating. So I want to talk about what hormonal acne is, what you can do about it at home, and what we can do in the dermatology office. So I'll start by saying hormonal acne tends to affect women. Some people don't have much acne in their, in their teenage years, and then maybe into their 30s they start noticing that they're having acne. This acne tends to be on the lower part of the face along the jawline. Um, and that it tends to be deeper than most typical acne, so not as much whiteheads and blackheads as uh, deep, tender nodules. Now these can leave scarring and they can be painful. So um, the other thing is we'll see that they tend to um, fluctuate or worsen right before or during uh, a woman's period. So there are a few things that you can do at home, and I'd be lying if I said that this would 100% uh, take care of you, but one of the things you can do is use a good uh, acne cleanser like salicylic acid in the morning. So salicylic acid is a gentle keratolytic agent, meaning that it opens up oil glands and prevents blockage of the pores. So that's one option. Uh, another option for salicylic acid is this one. It's called Vichy salicylic acid, and this is a much uh, this is a gentler version. It's only 0.5 salicylic acid instead of 2 percent. So those are a couple of the cleansers you can use in the morning. Another option for you would be benzoyl peroxide. Now another option for you is benzoyl peroxide. This is 10% benzoyl peroxide by Oxy. You can find it in many different brands. This has acne fighting properties along with the same keratolytic effects or opening of the pores that the salicylic acid has. The only downside is it can cause um, bleaching of fabrics and, and clothing. So you have to be careful with that. Any of these are good options um, to start a good acne routine. Now, one of the big things that you can do at bedtime is use a retinoid. This helps prevent blockage of the pores and help normalize the way our skin grows to prevent plugging and acne bumps from forming. This is an example here of La Roche-Posay Adapalene. This is a, previously was only a prescription product made by Differin and now um, it is available uh, over the counter. Use this only as a pea-sized amount at bedtime. You start Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and then increase it to nightly as tolerated. It's okay to use a good moisturizer after this because it can cause some dryness. Now, oftentimes, hormonal acne can't be controlled simply with over-the-counter products at home. So you may need to see your dermatologist. And seeing your dermatologist, if you have a skin dis uh, disorder or condition, is always a good idea to make sure you're getting an accurate diagnosis and having access to the best treatments. So some of the things that we'll do for hormonal acne is one, we could use stronger retinoids uh, like the adapalene, only that are prescription strength. Another thing is we can put people on oral antibiotics that are anti-inflammatory and also kill acne bacteria. Um, another thing we can potentially do is put people on oral contraceptives or even spironolactone, which can block testosterone, uh, which we know does play a role in, in the hair follicle and also the oil glands. So that can help. Um, and then finally, some people may be candidates for isotretinoin or Accutane, and this is a medicine that's an oral retinoid that can offer a permanent cure for some people for their acne. But that's worth, uh, always worth talking to your dermatologist about and seeing if that's right for you. So that's a brief look into hormonal acne. I hope it's helped you. If it has, feel free to like and subscribe. If you have further questions, I'd be happy to answer them in the comment section. So feel free to drop a comment. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time.